Hello and welcome to this Lightroom tutorial. In this tutorial I want to be discussing the Tone Curve. And now the Tone Curve is an ultra powerful tool in Lightroom that can really give your photos the edge. Now I'd say this tutorial is aimed at people with intermediate Lightroom skills because it's really important to have um, fully understood the basics of Lightroom first. Because you really need to understand the grasp and then grasp the concept of exposure, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. Because what the Tone Curve does, it's a very dynamic way to manipulate these features and really just fine-tune your edits on your photo. So, with that being said, um, I have, by the way, already um, done a tutorial on Lightroom, the basics. So if you're interested in seeing that, head over to my channel and you'll be able to find it there. Well, with that being said, let's dive into Lightroom and get this started. And here we are in the Lightroom Develop module. And the example photo I chose for this tutorial is this photo here of the London Eye with a boat in the foreground. And the reason I chose this photo is because it's a very well balanced and exposed photo, which is the perfect um, prime example to show you a good tutorial on. And why it's very balanced and well exposed, you can see here in the histogram in the top right corner, where there's a lot of detail in the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights aren't overexposed at all. Now, workflow wise, I always feel it's best to first do your basic adjustments before moving on to the tone curve. And I do realize that everybody has their own individual style, so for, to have the most equal and uh, fair playing ground that, so that this tutorial applies to as many people as possible, I think it's best to just hit auto for the sake of this tutorial. And then I'll also move the uh, picture profile into landscape mode since this is a landscape shot. Now this is already a remarkably improved photo just by hitting auto, but let's focus on what we came here to do, which is the tone curve. Now let me talk to you guys about how the tone curve really works and how it's structured. In its default form, it's just a diagonal line running from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. This means no adjustments have been done yet. Now, um, let me talk to you guys about what sections of this graph um, the tone curve represents. On the left side of the graph, this area over here roughly, you've got your shadows and on the right side of the graph you've got your highlights and everything in the middle probably these, this area over here is your midtones. Now what, the gra what this graph allows you to do is to adjust each of these areas very dynamically and very tactile by applying points to the tone curve. Now when it comes to doing tone curve adjustments my, my advice to you would be very subtle and use less points rather than more points because the more points you use um, the less uh, believable your photo looks and the more fake it starts to look but let me show you a few things you can do on the tone curve so uh, a good thing to do is just to add a point right in the middle of the curve and now watch what happens when I push this this curve up which is right in the middle of the midtones if I push it leftwards you can see the, the pictures getting more exposure because I'm brightening up only the midtones but the shadows and the highlights are retaining their level of exposure roughly. Other side of the curve, <clears throat> you can see I'm darkening the photo by dropping the exposure in the midtones. Cool. Let me hit Command Z twice to reset the curve. And let's talk about the highlights and the shadows. The highlights are on the left, on the right side of your curve. And um, yeah, let me just add the midpoint again, just to um, use that as a base point. And here on the top right corner of the curve of my highlights. So if I drag those down, I'm darkening the highlights, which you can see already. So this is kind of the equivalent of um, moving the highlight slider and the basic adjustments into the negative. So that's a good adjustment to make. Conversely, if you want to brighten your highlights, which is unusual, but I guess everybody has their own style, you could slide the curve up here and your highlights would get considerably brighter. Another good way to reset the curve is just to right click on it and then click flatten curve and it resets. Let me show you the same thing in the shadows. So if I drop the button in the midtones again and then point rather. And here on the bottom left corner is your shadows. Now if you push this um, bottom point up, you're actually brightening up your shadows, which is kind of the equivalent of pushing the shadows in the basic model into the positive. But if you want to crush your blacks, i.e. make the shadows darker and um, let them start on black, you can push the bottom point 
uh, along the, the x-axis here at the bottom. Now what that does is, let me drop it here, that the extreme shadows over here, as well as the slightly milder shadows, are all now turned into complete black, which gives you this very dark, crushed black, moody feel in your photo. So really the key is to make the tone curve your own. But let me show you some adjustments that I personally would make when it comes to this photo. So let me flatten the tone curve for you guys again. And this is kind of my own personal style and how I like to approach my photos. So I usually, again, drop a point right in the middle and then push up the exposure just to get this, uh, the scene a little bit brighter, a little bit more lively. And then another thing I like to do is just to add a bit more contrast into the blacks or remove the contrast. In this case, I think the shadows are still a bit too dark. So I personally would raise them just a little bit, but like I said, keep it subtle. Now what happened though with this photo, and that's why I wanted to show you guys this, is by having pushed the, the mid-tones up, as well as the shadows up, the photo has become a lot more flat and it's lacking a lot of contrast. And the way to reintroduce contrast into your tone curve is by creating something called an S-curve. And let me show you what that looks like. I'll be adding another point somewhere in the middle of the shadows, so right about here. And now if I drag this point back down, I'll be introducing the contrast again, but only into the shadows of the photo, while leaving the highlights um, untouched. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'll just be dragging this point back, almost to this dotted line, which was our starting point, that flat diagonal, i.e. where no adjustments were made. And by having pushed this point back towards the diagonal curve, you can see a bit of an S-curve starting to appear, which means that the contrast is re-established in the shadows, while having lifted the shadows and having exposed the, the mid-tones. And then another good thing to do sometimes is just to, um, right here on the edge, just make your highlights a bit darker, which again accentuates a lot more contrast here in the highlights as well, but also make sure that I keep all the tones in the sky perfectly exposed and nothing is blown out or overexposed. So this kind of basic setting, S-curve, slightly brightened tone curve is my personal preference and my personal style. But I hope this tutorial helped you um, in, a, in understanding how the tone curve really works. And I hope you can apply it to find your own style in your own photos. And that brings this Lightroom tutorial to an end. If you have some future suggestions for Lightroom tutorials or anything you'd love to learn about, do let me know in the comments below. And if you have some extra insights on the tone curve that you'd love to share, I'd love to read about these, also let me know in the comments below. Lastly, if you found this video to be particularly insightful, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with your photography friends, as well as drop a like in the comment below, because that does help this video get seen by a lot more people. Lastly, if you're interested in joining me on uh, future Lightroom tutorials, just like this one, or would love to join me behind the scenes as I photograph London, and various other locations all around the world, do hit that subscribe button below and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye for now.